Hi, it's April 27th, 2024. I'm Jim Lowe, and welcome to High Country Chronicles Knives and Gear. Um, this, I guess, is the first official uh, fishing trip of the year. I am currently in Yosemite National Park, which is typically where I spend my opening days. I'm gonna be fishing uh, a place that I call a Gutter Creek on my website. So if you're familiar with that, uh, that's where I'm going today. I'm also going to be fishing North Green Creek. Not its real name, but the name that I've used on my website for decades. I don't plan to, to spend that much time out here today. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe two or three hours. Now, I've never really given too much information about Gutter Creek. And I, <laughs> that's because there's not much to say about it. Um, it's the kind of place that most people would would pass up um i only fish you know maybe uh maybe a 50 yard section of stream here it's not really a destination stream but it is worth a cast or two i'm i've caught uh, 16 inch brown trout in there so it's uh you know it's not someplace that i'm gonna pass up okay so here's the gutter stream and you can kind of see why uh, i'm not going to spend too much time here it's pretty brushy and um, yeah it can be a pain to fish but uh, there are some you know there are some big fish in here so a uh, very high possibility that I'll run into uh, bears today um, I, I don't carry bear, bear spray uh, typically uh, one I don't often run into bears um, two the bears in Yosemite are pretty habituated to people so I don't think they're going to bother me too much. Today I'm going to fish the uh, the beadhead hare's ear and a small uh, size 20 hare's ear. I'm fishing 5x um, mainly because that's what I have. Ideally, uh, I'd fish this the size 20 on a on 6x, but I don't have that. I'm also fishing a seven and a half foot uh, four weight that I patterned off of a Payne 100 with my hardy featherweight reel and a four weight GPX line. Yeah, I still, I still have a few of the GPX lines that I've not used yet. So until I, until I, until I make my way through those lines, I'm still gonna use them. So I am wearing my waders today and you can see why it's, it's pretty marshy. Um, It can be hard to actually know where the stream is and where the marsh is. Uh, and that's why I call it a gutter stream, because there'll be little gutters in this grass uh, where the fish will hang out. But at this, at least over here, there's, uh, you know, a line of trees, and that's, that's where the stream is that I'm going to fish. Here's the grass, and the stream is... <laughs> right here and you can see why I say it's not really it's not really a destination stream and that's the gutter so I'm gonna make a few dapping casts and we'll see if we can pull anything out of here Yep, we got into a fish. And he's hanging me up, I think. Yep, he's, hang he's hung me up. It's a nice fish too. You can see him flashing there underneath the water. That's a good 12 inch fish. Brown trout. And you can see, this is probably a good you know, three feet deep. Yeah, nice brown. I can get in here without tossing my stuff. Can I land this fish without losing him? I don't think that is... Okay, well, you can see it's a nice brown. 
12 inches easily. Okay, let's try to get him unhooked from this grass though. There you go. That's why I don't pass up this little spot. Not bad for the first official fish of the year. So as you can see, you know, it's it's challenging because you're relying on your getting your fly in, but then you're also relying on the fact that you can avoid all the grass and get somewhat of a somewhat of a good drift. So you're really relying on the fish's, you know, predatory instinct of something dropping in the water and then the fish just going and smashing it immediately. Since I've already picked up a fish in this spot, I'm going to move on because as uh, Gary Borger once said, if you had a dinosaur crashing around in your living room, you would sure know about it. And yeah, I had to <laughs> do a bit of crashing to get that fish landed. And so most of the stream, at least in this area, is covered by brush. Um, you just got to look for those pockets that you can get your fly down into. Pockets like this. Now I've taken off the smaller fly just to make things a little bit more manageable. So drop it. And frankly, up here in the meadow, I usually expect to catch brook trout. Down, um, down below is where I expect to catch browns. And it doesn't look like there's anybody home in here. Nope. And I'm getting hung up. So. We will move on. Anyway, you can see what I mean by it. it's not a destination spot. You can certainly fit, catch fish here, and if you're lucky, you can get into some good fish. But I don't think it's the kind of spot that most people are going to want to fish. Now, you could bushwhack it if you wanted to. Um, you could also go to the other side of the stream that actually might have some better access but i tend to stay on this side of the creek um, there are some residences for the rangers over that way and so just out of respect you know i stay on this side i'd be lying though if i didn't say that it, <laughs> it didn't make an already difficult stream harder to fish i can hear a pretty big run up here See if I can get to it from this side. Oh, there's the fast water. Yeah. And it's all under these brush. All under this brush. And you can see, or at least you can hear, the main part of the stream is, is right down in here. But there's nothing on that side. There's no holes there. It's all in this brush. I'm gonna head upstream a little bit, see if it opens up a little bit more. Doesn't look like it does, but who knows? I've actually never tried to fish it this far up. I usually go about 50 meters up. Okay, it is opening up a little bit, looks like. And it also looks like there's a fence line. So, meh, maybe it would be okay to cross over. Okay, I'm gonna dap in here, see what happens. Okay, no joy there. Um, I am noticing that it's not as deep here. Well, I, I spooked a fish in there, but it looks like this is the confluence of two small trivs. So I'm gonna check up a little bit further, but I'm guessing I won't get much, much good water past here. Yeah, it thins out. So um, I'm just gonna head on to my primary destination. I think I'm gonna go and hit that spot again, see if another fish has moved up in there and then check real quick where the um, where the creek goes underneath the trail and then head up the head up the road at that spot and back in the day this whole section was fishable 
but uh, not today. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Is there another little fish that is willing to take my fly? Does not look that way. Nope, there we go. Ah. Oh. Brookie just came up before it. And it got tangled in the weeds. Okay, let's try it again. Brookie is right there, I see it. I can see his tail. This is maybe a little bit behind him, but maybe, maybe the noise. We'll get him to turn around. There we go. Rook trout. I caught decent brook trout in here as well. Cool. So, two fish, pretty much where I expected them to be, so I'm happy about that. Okay, this is where the road crosses the creek. And sometimes I fish downstream, but I'm going to try a few, a few casts in here. Continuing on, um, this trail, which is actually a fire road, uh, takes you to one of the three big sequoia groves in the park. Um, 
the creek essentially starts up there as its headwaters and then flows through until it reaches the Tuolumne. Now this road wasn't paved the last time I came through here, so it'll be interesting to see how far up the pavement goes. Now it's getting kind of late. Um, and when I say kind of late, meaning it's, it's almost noon, it's about 11.30. Um, so what'll happen here is this, this fire road will come through a bridge. And normally what I do is I fish, I don't know, maybe a 15 or 20 minute walk uh, before you get to the bridge. Um, but I think what I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna head to the bridge and eat, and then I'll, then I'll walk back. I'm starting to hear water. There's still pavement, but a lot of it's covered by debris now. Let's see if I see any fish. Not seeing any fish. Oh, wait a minute, that actually might be a fish there. Let's go look. Well, it certainly looked like good water, but I don't want to get sidetracked right now. Still going. Now, what I'm hoping, it's been so long since I've been here and I didn't read through my chronicles. So I am hoping that I didn't mix up the first creek with the next creek. Okay, I can hear water again. So that must mean I'm getting close. Well, this is kind of cool. Thank you, National Park Service. I'm sure they probably did it more to help preserve the environment, but uh, I appreciate it just the same either way. There's the creek. And... Pretty brushy there. You can see it's a bit bigger. I might head back this way um, after I eat and, and put in down there. That looks like good water. Now, what I do remember for sure about fishing these two creeks is that um, fish population wasn't great. So, it, you know, not, not that many fish showed. I didn't see many fish. I didn't catch many fish. Then why come back, you might be wondering. Well, wanted to do something different. I haven't been out here in a while, and uh, wanted to see how it had changed, how it stayed the same, that sort of stuff. I could have gone to Butterball, but uh, you know, nine times out of 10, I go to Butterball. Okay, I don't remember this at all, which makes me think that I have confused the two creeks. I'm gonna stop and eat, and uh, I guess I'll just start fishing here and work my way upstream. This doesn't look familiar at all. So first fishing trip of the year and uh, you know, like clockwork, I forgot my lunch. So when I went and got gas, I picked up one of these Lunchables and of course I've got my, my little grail, which has got water. So yeah, you know, I back in the day, I was navigating by map and maybe, maybe, Maybe I misread the map wrong because I don't, I don't remember this at all. I mean, this looks like the road basically becomes the stream. It's very odd. Uh, unless there was a turnoff that I missed, but I, I don't think there was. Okay, so this little weir and down there, that actually looks like really good water. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna bushwhack my way this way, or actually maybe that way, to the creek, 
work my way up, and then continue on. The, the GPS is showing that I am at North Green Creek. So I'll have to go back and look at my, um, look at my chronicles. I, I gotta imagine that, you know, as my memory goes, the second creek in is North Green Creek. I've actually gone through, I've actually gone over three creeks. So it's quite possible that all this time I've mixed up the two, but. At least in my memory, I certainly have. Okay, this looks nice. Oh, obstacles already. <laughs> so I guess I'll have to cross over and uh, go over that tree. Looks like nice dry fly water. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll end up doing that. Okay, looks like there's an easier way to that spot, so I'm gonna go back over, come back through there, and try there. Well, maybe I won't. Because if there are fish there, I need to come in from behind. I think I'm gonna stay. I think I'll stay over here and just push back. Maybe up and over. Okay, I'm not seeing any fish along the left side. Maybe I'll throw a few casts straight down the middle and then under the bank. Okay, well, I may not be seeing fish, but they're seeing me. I just spooked a fish from down underneath this bank. Okay, certainly a tough approach to this back pool and uh, no joy here. Hopefully this upper pool will be a little bit easier to present to. Okay, hooked into one small fish, but didn't land them. So I'm hooking fish, but I'm not landing anything. There's so much underwater debris. Um, the bigger fish are getting off. And they seem to be brookies or browns. Uh, I've, since I haven't landed one, I, I don't know for sure. I, I just keep seeing a flash of yellow. Pretty, uh, pretty challenging environment. And the thing about this challenging environment is for me to get into the proper position, I keep spooking fish. Nope. Oh, yes! <laughs> oh.
And that was a brown trout. That was pretty clearly a brown. Okay, let's see if there's another one in there. Yeah, see, that's the thing. When it comes over to the side like that, I got to pull it out. Making makes, makes it hard to strike on a fish if he's not going for the action. And it seems like these fish are going for the action when I pull up on the fly. And now I'm hung up. There you go. Well, it's one o'clock and I'm going to start heading back down the trail. I do want to catch a fish in this creek though, so I'm going to uh, put in a, a little bit farther downstream where I saw earlier. I'm hooking a bunch of fish, but just not getting them to hand. So maybe a little bit better luck downstream and, uh, uh, you know, it's strange. So yeah, uh, fishing this, the fish that have been striking, they look like they were going to either be brown trout or brook trout. It was hard for me to tell because they weren't large enough and I didn't have them close enough that I could that I could actually see. But that last one was definitely a brown trout. So and that's interesting because I only ever caught uh, rainbow trout. And I mean, I haven't fished it a bunch, but, you know, I have fished it twice. Um, and so that's uh, that's interesting. And this whole area just isn't what I remember. Um, and I remember fishing and then hit, and then the fire road going past where I was fishing and going up. But, you know, here the road basically just ends into the stream. So, I don't know. Was there a right-hand turn that I missed and I didn't see? So, what I think I want to do, I think I want to fish that pool down in there. And then this run right in here. Um, the easiest way to, to get down there, it looks like, would be to go down this way. Um, but then I might be spooking fish. The other option is to go all the way around and then cross over at the bottom. I think I'll take a gander over there and see how that, that option looks. These fish are definitely spooky, so the less I can spook them, the better. Okay, this whole run looks good, so I'll make my way down that way and come up along the far bank. Up through here, casting all along there. Up until I get to that small, uh, that small drop, and then I guess I'll climb out. Huh, reeds. So there's no telling how deep this actually is. That's no good. Looks pretty hollow underneath there. Oh. So far, so good. Ooh, that looks like it might be good water over there, too. Now, it's always easier going if you're hiking through the stream as opposed to the brush alongside the stream. When you do that, you typically want to be going upstream, not down. But I want to take a peek at this one little run beneath me that looks really good. Okay, so I got to get out of the water and approach it from the back. So that's the run I'm looking at. And I guess I'll climb over the log back over here and then sneak my way down. And hopefully I will not have spooked anything. Wow, this entire section down there looks really good. Okay, so I can actually see fish in the back of that. In the back of that pool. Um, I don't think I want to put forth that effort though. Just making it down to this little section is enough. Okay. So I'm down at that little section. Um, you know, I, there, I can see fish down at the tail out, but I'm not gonna 
I'm not going to push my way back down to the tail out. I know better for next time. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm just going to throw some casts in here and move my way up. Well, that's a good drift. Nothing. That was a good drift in there, so I would have expected a fish to come for it if I hadn't spooked it. And if there was anything in there... Nada. And nothing coming from the rise. Okay, so I'm approaching that one run. Um, I saw a fish in that last one. It didn't catch anything. It was way, way back in, the, in that mess of sticks. Finally a clean hookup and a tiny, tiny, tiny fish. I think the best way to fish this might be from the other side. I'm, I'm, I mean, from here I can dap down in there. I uh, don't know if it's reasonable to think that I can land fish uh, if I do that. If I'm over there, I can let it drift down underneath a little bit. That'll give me a better opportunity to land fish. So I've come around to the other side and another brown trout. Trying to get way down underneath there. Nada. Nada. So. It's about quarter to two, and I kind of want to be leaving Yosemite about three, so I think I'm going to fish this last hole up here and then, uh, and then head out. This looks interesting. There's a fish under that tree, right where those sticks are coming down. He's sitting right there. And I suspect when I come up from behind, I might spook him. But let's give it a go. Now, the one thing I noticed about this stream is that there are tons of sentinel fish. So, oh, there's two fish and I spooked one. There was a bigger fish in there on the left. Well, that's a shame. And then there's a little sentinel fish right down here at the bottom of this run. Now, if I can put my, whoa, 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 I'm gonna fall in. Where is the bottom of this stream? She's Louise. That's undercut. Okay, um, I can't step into the stream here because there's an undercut. What am I gonna do? Well, and there's, you can see there's a fish right at the end of the pool there. That one in the middle is still there. The big one went over to the left, or went over to the right, rather. Okay, so I guess I'll try to present from the bank. Ah. Uh. 
and I spooked one fish. But that other fish is still there. And like I said, there's a bunch of tiny sentinel fish. I can see, I don't know, a half dozen fish that are probably in the three to four inch range. And that one fish that I was just going to try to pull out of there. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Uh, let's see. Well, you know what? Maybe I can, maybe now that I'm over I'm farther upstream, maybe I can step down in there. Okay, it's not solid. Uh, can I step in here? Okay, I can step in here. All the sentinel fish are going to shoot forward. Okay. And that one fish shot forward as well. Okay, so none of the fish that I had seen are, are on station anymore. So I'm hoping now that I can make a cast and just have one go for the, go for the splash. Nope. Yeah, they're spooky. And I need to be making this cast farther upstream, which is a hard thing to do with that log there. Nope. So they've all moved up into that log. And the only way I'm going to get any fish is come around to this left here, spook all the fish that I'm currently casting to. Oh, wait a minute. One's come back farther. And then cast over that log. Yeah, they're not interested. So that's what I'm going to do. So now all these fish are hunkered down. Oh, they're not spooking though. That's interesting. There's a whole bunch of fish right in here. But they're not spooking, but maybe they're already spooked and they think that deep is better. Yeah, they're not going for my fly, that's for sure. Fly is drifting past them. Yep, okay, so. Let's try and throw a cast. Ooh, that's a nice fish. Okay, we're gonna try and throw a cast over this log and hope for the best. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. Yeah, got him. Oh. Oh well. And that's the thing about fishing over a log, right? I mean, I had to a hope that my rod was long enough not to pull him up on the log as I moved forward. And that wasn't the case. That was a good fish though. That was probably the best fish in this creek. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can move up and maybe catch another. So I'm gonna come over here. Lob a cast in there. Nothing. I can't see anything, so I'm relying on my line getting taut or just timing my timing my strike. You know, sometimes you make a cast, you wait a couple seconds, and then you uh, and then you strike. You wait until you think you got a good drift and then you strike. Ah, I'm not getting a good cast in here. Okay, so one bow and arrow cast, and then I'm gone. 
That's just where I wanted it. Survey says nada. Okay, I am out of here. Still got a fly on. I tell ya, I will go back and look at my chronicles, but this is not the way that I remember this water being. Or this, or this bridge, for that matter. So, I just missed two fish over at the bridge and uh, spooked a third. So, maybe next time I'll come out and plan to fish both creeks together. Uh, come out a little bit earlier, stay a little bit later. Bring a shorter rod. Back at the car, um, that was that was a blast. Not quite what I had pictured when I had planned to come here. Um, yeah, I'm just all sorts of turned around. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll look at my website and I'll get myself straightened out. Um, if you've watched to this point, thank you for that. I've been having GoPro problems for a long time now. Uh, I continue to have problems today. So if you stuck it out, I really do appreciate that. Uh, I think it's probably time to get a new camera. Um, yeah, if you followed until this point, thank you for that. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for coming along. Hey everybody, I'm out on my morning run, and I had this idea to film this epilogue. If you're watching this, thanks. I really do appreciate it. You know, only about 30% of viewers make it past the one minute mark on any of my videos and only about half of that make it to the end. So if you're watching this, I really do appreciate it. Um, you know who you are. I know who you are. Um, just by the comments and the things that you say uh, to me in the comments and in private. So I kind of feel like I need to give an explanation about what's going on in this video. So before going out, I didn't do my due diligence. I didn't go back and thoroughly read my chronicles. And so I went out with the idea um, that I'd already outed this stream. Now, I had done a couple of Google searches on the streams before I left home. Ironically, my site didn't come up, but there were a few others that came up. And so as I got closer to Yosemite, I got more comfortable with the idea of naming the stream. And so throughout the video, I talk about the, the streams pretty freely and I, I named them pretty freely but as I was going through the editing process I became less and less comfortable with that idea um, now I haven't you know haven't been to these streams uh, that often and I certainly haven't been there within the last 10 years but uh, they are and butterball included some of the few places that I can go where there's no trash um, you know there's no beer cans there's no wrappers there's no bait cans or, or mono all over the place. Um, the fish population was greater than I remembered it to be. And so, you know, the idea of freely naming the streams and perhaps being the cause of an influx of, of fly fishers and bait fishers, I, I didn't really feel comfortable with that. Um, again, you know, the information is freely out there on the internet and if you're, you know, if you're inclined, you can go through my video in detail and you can probably figure it out. But, you know, one of the things I've been doing in a lot of my videos recently is, you know, saying where I'm going, providing maps on how to get there. And I feel pretty comfortable doing that with places that uh, are easily found and well known. And I just didn't feel that way as I was editing the video. So I had a completed video, which I actually liked. Um, but then I went back and re-edited it. And so it, parts of the video where you see it, it feels choppy or I've got audio inserts, it's just me being a little bit more judicious about the information that I put out. So um, regardless of that, I hope you still enjoyed it. And again, if, uh, if you're watching to the end of this, 
Uh, I, I really do appreciate it and hope everybody uh, has a great day.